Well, thank you very much. And I'm also um, <clears throat> really excited to be able to share the work that we're doing here at UVM and in Vermont and the approach that we've taken here, or one of the approaches that we've taken to helping farmers develop nutrient management plans uh, for their farming operations. So this is a bit of our story about um, how we came about this you know, strategy, how we're implementing it, and then some of the tools that, that we're using to do that. And I'll be co-presenting today with Lindsay Rule, who's a team member um, with me that's involved uh, with this process as well. All right, so I thought just quickly, um, I'd talk a little bit about what's going on with um, regulations in Vermont. Just last year, the legislature pa passed Vermont's Clean Water Act, which is by far the largest uh, rules and regulations ever passed in the state of Vermont that's focused on clean water. And this um, hasn't driven our program per se, but now it definitely is increasing the importance of our nutrient management program in Vermont. And I, th I thought I would put kind of where we're at um, in perspective for folks. So <clears throat> before these new required agricultural practices, that's what they're now called here in Vermont, we had um, medium farm and large farm regulations. And you can see the numbers there. Essentially, if you had 200 or more dairy cows, which is kind of our primary livestock operations in Vermont, then you were required to complete um, a 590 standard nutrient management plan for your farm. It has, it still has to be updated yearly, and you also have to have records available um, and taken yearly as well. Now, small farms were exempt uh, from that. And, and up until last year, small farms essentially were supposed to take soil tests every five years, follow those soil tests. Um, they had to have 10 foot buffers, basically um, of perennial vegetation from surface water. And those farms had to meet 2T. Um, that's all changed now with these new regulations. And, and essentially at this point now, um, small farms, which are any farm, dairy farms that are, have more than 50 cows will also need to have uh, a 590 standard nutrient management plan. Um, and other farms now, so any other farm in the state of Vermont will still have to soil sample every five years. Um, all of the farms in Vermont, livestock or not, have to meet T and um, they cannot have any gully erosion on their farm. They, every farm has to have 25 foot buffers from surface water um, or 10 feet from a ditch. So these are all farms, regardless of if they have livestock or not. Um, these farms also have to have any manure, if, you, if you're farming in a floodplain, all manure has to be applied to those fields by October 14th. And those farms also have to be cover cropped no later than October 15th. Um, an, a new, another new regulation is that manure cannot be applied on fields um, that are in annual crops if they have greater than 10% slope. And if you are going to apply manure, then they have to have a permanent 100-foot buffer on those fields. Um, an, another new regulation is that all farms have to receive four hours of water quality education every five years. And we're also heading into um, potentially some new tile drainage regulations as well. So you can see that to be a farm in Vermont um, is going to change <laughs> quite substantially here in the coming years. And um, our farms will be um, highly regulated in regards to, to water quality. And this is now going well beyond um, our livestock operations and, and really hitting all farms. Um, that we have as well. So I thought I would put some of this into context for you. Now, we're really here to talk about our farmer nutrient management training course that, um, that I, myself and colleagues developed actually in 2006, so nearly a decade ago. I can barely believe that actually. Um, and I'll tell you the reason we actually 
started this course was, you know, this was actually at the time when the medium farm regulations were coming into play in Vermont. And farmers wanted to know why they couldn't develop their own nutrient management plan. And I think anybody that here that works with farmers knows that they're independent in nature and if they can do it themselves and not pay someone else to do it, they're likely gonna try to do it themselves. Um, and really, I didn't, I didn't have an answer for that. I, I didn't really know um, a lot of, about nutrient management planning at the time, not at least to the NRCS standard. Um, and I, I started to work with NRCS as well as the Agency of Agriculture and the Conservation Districts to actually figure out if we would be able to train farmers on how to write and complete a nutrient management plan that met the NRCS 590 standard. So this entire course was, you know, developed with that in mind so that farmers could go through a process and when they were done, they would have a completed plan. Uh, plan. So the course um, at the time consisted of five three-hour classes. And you can see this was actually a photo from the very first class. There were eight farmers in the class. And you can see um, the pencils and the paper and, of course, the food. I think everybody knows that that's a prerequisite to, to get farmers there. Donuts, I think, and sandwiches. Oh, this pretty good day, I guess. Um, but you can see calculators, pencils, paper, erasers. That's how we started. Um, and we did complete uh, very successfully that, that first year, um, eight farms came through the class and completed plans that met the 590 standard. All right. So um, this, this course, this sort of framework has really continued on um, for the last decade. Um, and it has always, really up into the last few years, been relatively small. It's always been word of mouth. Um, it's never actually, um, we've never actually advertised the class. And, um, and it's always, you know, rel had relatively low numbers of farmers for the most part. Um, and part of that's because it's, it's a lot of work. Now, in order for a farmer to even consider coming to the class, um, they have to have current soil tests, current manure tests, which means the soil tests have to be taken within a you know, three year time frame. They have to have a manure test um, from each one of their storage facilities. They have to come knowing how much manure they're producing on their farm. They also have to come with um, soil loss calculations or numbers for each one of their fields. And so people who are familiar with this um, know this as um, the Russell 2 calculations. And then they also have to come with the required maps that are required for um, building a nutrient management plan. So the soils map, nitrogen leaching index map, um, so on and so forth. So you can see right away that, that this is a collaborative effort because our farmers are not running ArcView um, and toolkit and developing their own soils maps um, or conservation plan maps. They were working with NRCS um, or the conservation districts to do so. Whoop, let's see if I can go down here. All right. Now, <clears throat> when we started this class, Again, it was, it was really a pilot program. It was focused in one part of the state. We worked very closely with our local NRCS office and conservation district um, and agency of agriculture folks to make it all happen. Um, and as time went on and there was more need and more need um, for, uh, you know, building rotations and to get Russell 2 numbers and for mapping um, and assessing the farm, the state of Vermont actually created a, a new type of position called land treatment planners. And the goal of these land treatment planners was to create sort of the base framework for a nutrient management plan. Um, so this is pretty unique to Vermont as far as I know. And um, somebody may correct me, but uh, as far as I know, this is, this is very unique to our area. So again, the land treatment planners have been really critical to the success of our class, especially um, over the last few years as the number of farmers, especially small farms, 
um, that we work with are trying to complete nutrient management plans, both for equip purposes, so funding through uh, federal programs, and also knowing that new regulations are coming to the state of Vermont. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, describe the course a little bit. So each class, as I said, it was a, a five-week class. So essentially, we meet once a week um, for five weeks. That's changed. We now meet over a six-week period. So again, once a week for six weeks. So it's a huge time commitment for farmers. Um, and each class starts with a 40 um, minute lecture that's related to whatever material we're covering covering that week and you can see we have a course manual and you can actually download that on our um, website if you're interested and during each class the farmer learns how to complete a section of the actual nutrient management plan so we talk about you know whatever material we're covering that week so it might be focused on the phosphorus cycle and the P index and then we show them how to complete that aspect of their nutrient management plan and go over that in class. And then they're expected to go home and actually complete that work for their farm as homework. And of course, you can imagine many farmers, they get a, you know, a charge out of that, that they haven't done homework for years or, oh, if they knew they were going to have to do homework, they wouldn't have taken the class. But um, so that's kind of the framework of the class each week. And, and this is kind of the basic outline. And again, if you want a lot more detail, you can go online and, and download the course manual. But, you know, this, this again is a six-week process where we start just start really basic and actually very easy so we don't scare anybody away, going through maps, talking about soil types um, and soil loss, and, of course, describing why a farmer, you know, would want a nutrient management plan and why it's important. Um, and then week two, we talk about risk assessments, you know, phosphorus cycles, phosphorus index, nitrogen leaching indexes, buffers, you know, really focused on environmental risks. Um, week three, we go um, into soil biology and physical properties, and we talk about organic matter, manure, nitrogen cycles. Uh, week four, we get into soil chemistry, talking about potassium, micronutrients. Um, crop recommendations and nutrient credits. Um, and week five, sort of connecting all the pieces, um, putting everything together that the farmers need to complete the plan. And by week six, if everybody has, you know, come to every class, done all their homework, by week six, their plan should actually be completed. And we're just talking about record keeping requirements you know, and how they implement their plan, read their reports, um, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's kind of the basics to the course. And looking at it here on paper, it seems really easy, but it's, it's quite complex, especially if you've created a plan. So I was going to spend just a few minutes talking about, um, you know, what we've seen by doing um, this type of work. And I will say that, that this approach um, which makes sense when I say it, teaching farmers, educating farmers, empowering farmers um, to write their own nutrient management plan is, you know, the right direction to go in. It's been really uh, successful. Uh, the farmers get so much out of coming to this class, and, and the numbers really show that. Um, and just some statistics, 2006 through 2012, we only held uh, one to two classes per year. And again, they were relatively small, eight to 12 farmers. Um, the teacher to student, student ratio is, you know, one um, teacher to every two students or helpers. Um, and then the classes began to expand. They became more popular. 2012 through 2014, we held two to three classes per year, trying to, to put more farmers through, through the program. 10 to 15 farms was the average class size. Trying to keep this teacher to student ratio one to two again. Um, and now, you know, sort of in the current time, we're up to about six classes per year or six courses. Um, six different locations around the state of Vermont. The class size is about the same, 10 to 15, 
and we try to still keep the teacher to student ratio one to two. Um, we have in any given year a 90 to 100 percent completion rate which really is phenomenal and it shows you how dedicated to the process both the farmers are but also the helpers and the teachers and everyone that's involved in this process is. Um, I think last year we had 50 some odd farmers go through the course and only one farmer did not complete. And he's actually gonna come back through the class again this year to finish up. Um, and when we survey farmers, I don't think I've ever had a farmer say that they wouldn't recommend the course to another farmer. So, um, you know, we have a lot of fun, of course, and, and um, you know, but overall, it's a lot of work, but farmers get so much out of it educationally, and I think they feel really empowered when they leave, that even if they don't continue to maintain the plan themselves, if they hire someone to, you know, continue updating the plan for them, they were so glad that they took the course just to learn and and actually we still have um, this year we have a farmer or two that's just coming through the class to learn and they're paying someone else to write the plan for them um, so again the instruction time is about 15 to 18 hours in class time so over the six week period it's about three hours every week three to four hours um, the homework time that we've documented for farmers is anywhere between five and people I've reported up to 55 hours outside of class. So again, that really depends on how large your farm is, you know, how comfortable you are with computers. Um, but you know, they are spending a good time, a, a good amount of time at home working on this. But again, even with all that time spent, farmers really in, enjoy this process. Um, we're trying to, you know, always stay with that one to to two ratio. Um, there's a couple of instructors usually at each location kind of split up the weeks and what's, you know, who's presenting what. Um, and usually there's four to six staff per course. And these are conservation district staff, um, NRCS staff, and, and UVM extension staff as well. Um, sometimes we have to meet with the farmers outside of class if they get behind and the amount of time that might be spent outside of the course really ranges. You know, usually if, if somebody gets behind, you might spend three hours outside of class helping them get caught up. But I will say this is, you know, and it, it's, it's a really intensive program, as you can imagine if you have written a nutrient management plan, you know, to basically do it start to finish in six weeks, it's a lot of work. Okay, um, right now, you know, I have to say that, you know, when you're, when you're teaching courses through the university and through agencies, we don't always keep best, you know, the best track of every hour that's spent. Um, but right now, you know, the cost to attend the course is $500 per farm. Um, and that cost for most farms is being covered through an RCPP grant through NRCS, a Regional Conservation Partnership Grant, um, or through EQIP. And then the farms also have to pay, purchase Go Crop license, which is about $250. And then they also have to have, to have this land treatment plan. Um, and all of those costs right now, um, if a farmer's enrolled in an NRCS program, are covered through those grants. Um, otherwise, the farmers are um, paying, paying the full cost to attend. And we've also um, received grants, grant funds through the Vermont Agency of Agriculture as well um, to hold the course. All right, so we have done some surveying, again, in, in more depth. And, and one of the things that we know is that when producers are, you know, sort of writing their plans and updating their plans on their own, even with our assistance, they're more likely to, to implement um, the practices and implement their plans. So they basically have much greater buy-in and understanding 
and are more apt to actually take that plan and implement it. And I know for many of us, we know that that's a challenge. Um, when we surveyed farmers, and I think this kind of stays the same year after year, um, the barriers to implementing a plan, you know, is primarily the weather being the number one barrier, time, money, um, and then, you know, some other more minor kind of barriers. Whether or not people are saving money, you know, it's kind of all over the board. But what, you know, I hear from most farmers is that um, they may not save money and they may not spend more money. So it's kind of neutral because they're putting their, their fertility dollars where they should go where they matter and where they're gonna make a difference. So these cost savings are directly related to purchasing fertilizer, not related to you know, increased crop yields per se. Okay, and then we have seen that farmers have you know, implemented new practices by um, you know, developing a, a nutrient management plan. And what people are doing is, is really all over the board. Um, but it's exciting that they come to class, learn, and then they go out and adopt new practices, which is what we hope. All right. Um, so we're going to, you know, move on with Lindsay talking about the tools that we're using. And I'm just going to lead into that quickly. So as I mentioned earlier, we started with a paper version, pencil, eraser, calculators. Um, and that worked for a couple of years. But it was hard to update <laughs> and it was very time consuming for the farmers. And then we went to Excel um, using multiple spreadsheets, you know, with equations, it was cumbersome um, and didn't really, um, it was hard to adapt to farms with, you know, many different types of management systems. And then we moved into this web application with a mobile application over the last few years. Um, and, and both of those being designed um, and tested by farmers in this course. So, you know, they're, they love it because they help to build it um, and it fits for them. So GoCrop is, you know, the name of the web and mobile application that we use in this course. And at this time, I would say that's its primary use. So, you know, we have over 200 users of GoCrop all of them really having gone through this um, course. And just quickly before Lindsay goes, for folks that know anything about um, software development, this is it. <laughs> Don't ask me any questions about it. I got this from our developer. And, um, and then this is the mobile platform. So it's a web and mobile. mobile. And overall, um, one, of the, one of the ways we set this up is so that it had a modular design that could be easily customized for other states. So hopefully folks who are on here, if you're looking for something, um, we spent a lot of time and money on this and funding from you know, USDA, NRCS, and NIFA, and so on and so forth. So um, please talk to us. <laughs> 